Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are talking about Golem B8 and a couple of strategies on how to auto it. First I'm going to show you my general team that I take to B8 and then we'll go over some more possibilities and talk about the problems there and such. So again, I'm usually taking Kraken as my lead for the crit rate boost. I'm taking uh, Dark Gatito because obviously he's a dark type, can do a lot of damage there, and Dark Jack. Those are my three core units, uh, three dark types, because I really felt like I needed Jack in there for the passive healing. I, I probably could raise another non-dark healer, but I really wanted her in there. So that means other dark types are good to help share the damage, so that's why I have Kraken and Gatito in there. So three dark types. And the last one is usually either Light Jack or some other random damage dealer or whatever. The last one's basically a filler, but I take these three dark types so that no one's really ganged up on, no one's really focus fired. They recently changed Golem B8 to not have Bs in the first round, and that is good. So we're just going to go into B8, and you can see how it sort of operates. Unlike B9, the minions here are actually probably as bad or worse than the golem itself. I'm just going to leave them on auto there, and they'll do their thing. It's just that the Bs... Uh, which will appear on the second and third round usually, they can defense down. And a defense downed unit is very, very bad, especially when they're going to defense down Kraken or Gatito, because a Kraken with defense down is fragile, a, a Gatito is fragile enough as it is. Jack might be able to take it, but uh, yeah. So as you can see, Gatito is already not very healthy, so this is... Um, I wouldn't say a risky team depending on how strong your units are. I don't think I've ever failed a run with, with this team comp, but Gatito does die sometimes because of course he is sort of a glass cannon in a place where he's defensively weak. But yeah, the bees are the real problem here, not only because they can defense down, but they are actually a quicker attacker than the Moonflower, so if they do defense down you, that defense down can take effect immediately because of how slow the Moonflower's attack animations are. The Golem can definitely be annoying if you don't have much damage there because it does self-heal every so often turns and it also defends down as well as shocking I believe but there was my run anyway we're gonna go back to the airship and check out a few different strategies few different team comps that might work there. First thing you really got to decide is if you're taking any dark units. Dark units are more risky, but they will speed up your runs a lot because, of course, dark units will do a lot more damage to light units. But again, it's risky because light units will also do more damage to you. If you are going to take a dark unit, you probably should at least, at the very, very least, take two of them and two tanky ones. Because once one of your dark units gets defense downed, everyone else next turn will focus fire. So going with a full or mostly full dark team is what I decided to do. Um, some people don't have this option because they don't have enough dark units or they're not raised enough or they're not the right types. You know, I would also have a dark cupid here, but a dark cupid and a dark jack would maybe be a little bit safer, but it would also be slower and it might not even be as safe because you can't kill the bees as fast when you have one more healer and one less attacker, etc, etc. But naturally, the other option is to not go with dark units. Go with every other element of units, just your strongest ones. Units that get their survivability more from HP than from defense would be good because of the fact not only the minions can defense down, but also the boss can do it as well. So having uh, defense aggressors like Kraken in there is very dangerous because she gets all of her survivability from defense and so a defense down really really affects her bad. You'll definitely want to bring a few damage units in there as well and if you're not going with dark units then you may also try and want to get a defense breaker in there. Shelly might work. He's a little bit fragile but I think he'll be okay not being a dark type but if you aren't going with dark types you probably will want something to help speed up the runs a little bit and, and a defense breaker. 100% chance two turns on Shelly would be good or the Light Anu also has that. And he's definitely more of a tanky unit. He's a tank, has a lot of HP. An HP lead like Granitus or Cupid would also be a good idea if you're going for the more tanky team. I want to show a run with the sort of recommended units I was taking, but the main problem here is, is I don't have any other healers which are actually either not dark, because I have the Cupid here, he's raised, and I have my Dark Jack. Those are basically my only two healers that are raised, so it's kind of hard to show the type of team composition I'm talking about. About, but I'd probably go with something like this. You have your HP lead, your tank, uh, two damage dealers here, and Shelly's also a defense breaker, and then you'd have your healer here, either a passive healer or a burst healer. I think both will work fine. I mean, I guess we can throw our Siren in there. She hasn't been touched in ages, 
But just for the sake of the test, let's see how this works out. So yeah, starting off on the first round here, Granitus is getting all of the uh, focus fire there. It's kind of bad, but it's actually all right. We have the Siren here. Hopefully she can get some blue orbs. That's kind of the one problem I have with burst healers, especially ones that don't fill up their own SP bar, is that it, it kind of comes down to RNG. You know, with someone like Dark Jack, you're, you you have healing every turn or Water Persephone, whatever. So it's a lot more predictable how the, how the stuff's going to go. With burst healers, you need to have their... SP bar full. That's why I really wanted a water cura because she she restores her own SP bar every turn so it's less dependent on RNG. We have a B here where we're gonna see how that goes. Defense downing pebble would be pretty bad but thankfully their defense down doesn't have too much of a high chance of hitting so unless you don't get too unlucky it should be okay. Siren would have her active ready now but you won't use it until one of my astromons is below a certain HP threshold. Now probably yeah because of light jack there. So this kind of team comp definitely will be a lot slower as you can see uh, on my last run I was probably pretty much done at this point but um, it's probably safer especially if you don't have three strong dark units two might work if they're extremely tanky but it's still pretty risky in my opinion so now we're making it to the boss we're gonna see what goes down here if I had a stronger healer this would probably be a for sure win but I'm not too sure Granitus got shocked we're gonna stop the auto for a second just to check out his skills. Retribution, like all golems have, dealing damage to the fifth Astromon that, that attacks him. I believe it's 8k for this guy. He'll heal himself every four turns, so a slightly more damaged team might be good so he doesn't stay alive that long. Invincibility, as all golems have, can't be debuffed with anything except defense down and attack down, I believe. The special attack of B8, when he gets below a certain HP threshold, will lower the attack. On his active skill, this plasma beam here, he he has a 60% chance of shocking the enemy, and every normal attack will reduce your defense if it's not resisted. So let's continue the auto here. The minions are already dead, but uh, the golem still has quite a ways to go. He's going to do his plasma beam now. We'll see how many astromons get shocked. My uh, healer and granitus, so that's kind of bad, but it looks to be probably okay. Shelly might die because Siren's active isn't ready yet, and it doesn't look like it will be ready for quite a while, but his defense was reduced, so he's uh, dying a bit faster now doing his HP threshold slam attack now. I think Shelly will die here, looks like. He got the crit off on Shelly, so that was kind of bad luck. But the Golem did go down with a more defensive tanky team, and I would say it was pretty safe. Shelly only really died at the very end, so I think that's okay. On some unlucky rounds where you have like four Bs in the second wave or something, it could turn out a lot differently. Maybe Granitus could die if he gets defense down and then ganged up on, who knows. And of course, the stronger your Astromons are, the higher chance of success you will have. That's just how it is. The better gyms they have, the, the higher level they are, the higher evo they are. But yeah, I guess that'll do it for this uh, little guide here. If you have any questions regarding Golem B8, make sure to drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, thanks as always for watching and until next time.